everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Primrose. I am a 28 year old intellectual and this channel is dedicated to discussing issues around academics, career and adulting. Some of you may already know that I am currently pursuing my PhD in political studies at the University of Cape Town from which I also obtained a master's, honors and bachelor's qualifications. And throughout my academic career, I fortunately became a first class student and it wasn't necessarily intended. So in this video, I'm going to share with you five tips on how to become a first class student because I personally think it's a nice to have. You don't really need to aim to get first. You don't really need to get distinctions. You don't really need to be on a dean's list. Look at the type of qualification you're trying to get out of university and focus more on that. However, a little more won't hurt. And so if you take these steps into account, you might see yourself gradually becoming a first class student. So, number one, I would advise you to pick courses you love or those that resonate with your interests. And why am I saying this? It is easier to follow through courses or topics if you're already interested in the field of study or in the particular subject that you are taking. And so it won't drain you. Even when you're working hard on it, that interest, that passion will give you a drive. What do you do if you're studying courses or a degree that doesn't interest you? My friend, you have to develop that interest. Find something in you that drives you to want to earn a first class pass in that particular field. If anything, always aim to say that anything you pursue academically should become your forte, should become something that you've got information on, on your fingertips. And so by doing that by focusing on gaining that knowledge and wanting to be an expert you then develop an interest you can also then sustain that particular interest and earn higher grades as you go number two check or request for feedback so this relates to your assignments I imagine that most if not all universities have tutors, lecturers, teaching assistants and so forth and those people are there to provide guidance to you. They are there also to provide peer mentorship and I know that some universities even have like faculty uh, mentors. I was once a politics mentor as well as a humanities faculty mentor as well as a residence mentor. So exploit all those systems that are available. Let those people look at your work and ask for feedback and make sure that you use that feedback. Also sometimes even if you don't seek that feedback, you do have marked feedback on your papers. Look at it. Listen to what they say when they're discussing areas of improvement or the weaknesses that students have displayed in past assignments and make sure you sharpen your pencil based on that. Don't keep it blunt. Number three is to say, look at work that is excellent. If it's about a research project, if it's a thesis, if it's essays, for example, there is a lot of available information online, good pieces that you can look at and try and read those. Try and look at how those have been written and displayed and take it in, read it, study those things. They're not part of your course or curriculum, by the way, but because you want to become a first class person, you need to be going beyond what has been provided as learning material. You need to look for people that have done well and not just well, people that have excellent pieces. So look for those, study them and make sure that you find a way of equipping yourselves with necessary skills to do your assignments in a similar manner. So for example, if you're a humanities student, we write a lot of essays and people write on topics and there's always areas of improvement, there's always gaps of knowledge to fill in. And what I like mostly is you can actually, not necessarily cheat the system, but you can actually modify your own interests based on studies you've looked at. So for example, a lot of people have written literature on South Africa and, you know, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. 
there was also some form of reconciliation commission in Ghana. So if you ask to write an essay on truth and reconciliation commissions, consider picking the Ghana case study and try and replicate the way in which the research was done, but of course being cognizant of contextual factors. Why am I saying this? There's a lot of good writing and language that is used that has a strong command on the South African TRC that you can also apply to the Ghana, you know, um, transitional reconciliation case example for my masters for example what I did was there was a lot of research from South America and from parts of Europe on the regularization of undocumented migrants and because there was very little literature on that on South Africa's migration policy I decided to look at how South Africa regularizes migrants because they actually do but it's just that it is something that is under research so try and find excellent work and tailor it to your needs another thing about reading excellent pieces of work or people's thesis is that you get exposure to various or rather multiple voices and opinions and that is key to academic excellence academic excellence is about you showing that you know that there is an existence of multiple opinions multiple examples to substantiate those um, claims and to show that in your own writing you can also do the same as opposed to just saying this is my argument writing plainly on it and then that's it and also as opposed to just bringing about like two sides of the story and then saying you think that you can bring out a balanced argument no that doesn't cut it you need to be better than that and also another thing is about giving relevant examples for any key point you raise you must substantiate with key or relevant examples and also where can you get such information like i said read better papers they are available online and i usually just go to past thesis or honors research projects from various universities across the world i don't want to handpick universities at this point but i actually do look at papers from particular universities i mean you can name your harvard your oxford's i also look at you know south africa or africa-based universities it just depends on the topic so make sure you do that and in line with that when you've written a piece that is informed by excellent work write up a draft Find a way of sending an outline or a draft to the person who is going to mark the final assignments that you're going to do and that will help you to get pre-feedback before you actually do your final piece. Now the most important piece of advice I have for you is you need to fuel yourself. Be your own mentor, be your own source of encouragement, be your own consoler when you are crying because times are hard, your friends are going through stuff or they're busy happy because they've made the cut, your family is going through stuff or they're just unavailable. Your teachers, your lecturers have a lot on their hands. Same goes for your tutors and mentors. So you need to have got to have got something inside you that pushes you. If it's about you waking up every morning and say, good morning, my beautiful, intellectual, gorgeous, amazing primers, then do that to yourself. It is good to always be self-driven. You get a bad mark, you just like, oh goodness, today we didn't do well, but you know what? This is part of the learning process. You get a very high mark, reward yourself. And also sometimes, even when you don't get a really good mark, reward yourself. I mean, self-love, self-affirmation. No one is gonna do that better than you can for you. You know yourself best you know based how you can recover from setbacks and how you can continue to be optimistic about of course becoming a first class student number five i feel that you need to adopt innovative approaches so when you're doing your work always go the extra mile we are living in a fast-paced world Everything is slowly developing. So if you stick to textbooks or the knowledge only from lectures, you are so behind. Subscribe to newsletters, to journals, or social media accounts relating to your field. Even if you're an engineer, they stuff for that. An artist, they stuff for that. A social science student, there is 
material on there even if you're in the field of commerce there are relevant weekly or monthly or annual publications so subscribe to them and always have the newest information getting right to your head as it comes don't waste your time on social media on looking at fashion and all this other stuff if it's not your field of study rather follow accounts that discuss stuff that is relevant to your field so that you're always exposed to your field of interest in class on social media the stuff that you read your emails and whatever notifications you are constantly bombarded by that material do that for yourself if you are in international relations or in media you need to follow current affairs have that no what's on al jazeera what's on bbc what is cnn perspective what about cgtn what about the newspapers what are they saying always seeking out information this sharpens your intellect and it also keeps you jagged up as my father would like to say and if you're like that trust me you become a more analytical person and your intellect is sharpened on the go it's not about oh yeah i'm gonna sit down four hours read close my books hell no you even realize you start dreaming of your work you start writing assignments in your work you start even you know developing concepts in your sleep or theorizing you know based on the theories you've read because you are constantly sharpening your intellect and also in line with being innovative you need to know your strong and weak points i personally knew i struggled with tests and exams so i put in extra effort when it came to those so if i had assignments that were essay format for example i would put less effort in them then because i knew i had better essay writing skills and so i put more time into my test and exam preparation and also in line with that you need to set yourself apart from the rest of the students so that when people are marking your papers they're like wow how come no one else did this so for example if you're studying content that is related to theory even if the question does not ask you to cite relevant authors or refer to relevant um, key concepts and theories it is a no-brainer put it in there find a way of saying that discussing from a realist perspective i would think this way constructivists would say this 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 and that you know find a way of putting it in there and i always went into tests or exams or wrote assignments having knowledge of what key authors in a particular field write about because when you pick on them they've got a wealth of knowledge on the topic and so when you present that work and, and you reference them and you refer to them it also shows signs that you're an intellect you've done further research and so forth unfortunately i wouldn't know how best to be innovative if you're like in science medicine law and whatever but i think other ways of being innovative is developing st study strategies that match with the way you grasp concepts faster so if you're a person who benefits from group work go for it if you're a person who benefits from hearing stuff you know Sometimes I'll just write a script on a topic or on the whole course and then do a presentation in front of the mirror. In that way, you're reminding your brain of concepts, you're reminding your brain of relevant content that if you start thinking about when you're anyway, even in your sleep, you can actually deliver a great or rather an amazing piece on it. And also another way, it's to say, for example, try and listen. To people who are experts in your field speaking be it during a media briefing be it during an interview of sorts be it maybe at a lecture or seminar or at a workshop attend those if you are living in current times then that has to be virtual so you need to invest in internet for that you know and make sure that you are focusing on how they present how they speak about it even now when you look at youtube videos don't just look up how to write a literature review, someone's video, you watch it and that's it. Look at how it's being done and try and develop one of your own. You don't have to put it up on YouTube, but you would have done it on your own somewhere else and it helps you to refresh your mind. Other people prefer just recording on their cell phone, re-listening to it and it helps you to trace your thoughts. So for example, if you've got writer's block, just record what you're thinking. Then maybe to kickstart yourself to write an essay, you listen to that recording 
and it frames your mind. And if you're someone who's doing work that relates to calculations, if you're tired, just do some calculations randomly. Have a board somewhere in your room. Always have paper in every corner of your room. Be calculating. I do that with writing. Just jotting down points on my phone, on my papers. I've got multiple notebooks. And that just helps you to always be intellectual in your mindset. So those are my five tips on how to become a first class student. This worked for me. And why do I say it works? When I started university, I was just out here aiming to get an average of 65 because apparently that's what I needed to go forward. And because I was never too hard on myself and I come from a family where they say, do your best and whatever comes out of it, we support you. I never felt the need to get 100%. So what drove me to want to be a first class student? I was just chilling in my friend's room in first year and she's busy, she was always revising, you know. And I'm like, why aren't you waiting for end of semester to revise? She's like, no girl, I'm trying to make it to the dean's list. I'm like, what is a dean's list? She's like, oh, the dean's list is, um, you know, a way to honor students that have attained at least 70% average for their courses and the faculty, you know, and also I want to end up getting my degree, you know, with a high distinction. So I'm aiming for 75s and 80s and I was like, are those marks achievable? I mean, uh, I was just hanging in there with my 65s. I, I think I got a 170 or something, but I wasn't serious about it. I was just aiming to pass. About 50%, I was good. And at least I wanted like an upper second um, class degree. So but she made me think about what if I just also try and push myself, you know, when you're in varsity and you live on campus, especially, I had a lot of time at my disposal. So instead of just chilling in the dining hall for longer or just chilling and chatting about nonsense, talking about boys who don't matter anyway, or, you know discussing movies and watching series and stuff I was like you know what I'm gonna go for this fortunately I wasn't a person who really really was into stuff like your television series movies and what of you so it was easier to move in, into that zone so in line with that you know I was like I wrote down my strategy I want to get first class passes I was already studying stuff that I love so I was already on track I made sure all my extracurricular activities and my hobbies and the stuff I followed on social media was in line with international relations gender studies and public policy and administration because of course that's what I was studying why else would I be focusing on anything else at the time there was actually no reason and so I always had sustained interest in what I loved and also I surround my, myself with friends who were excelling. People thought I was also getting first class passes. That time I was getting 60s and sometimes I was getting 50% for my politics assignments and I was just like <sighs> whimpering in my bed and sometimes crying in the shower and I'm like God this ain't happening. But then I started looking at feedback from my tutors and I was actually improving on it. You know, improve your referencing. Spend hours on referencing guides. Look at articles and how people have referenced. It is so easy to pick up referencing skills. And I was losing up to 10% on most papers for that. Another thing, always make sure you submit your work on time. If you can't, make sure you have a valid reason and apply for an extension ahead of time so that you also don't get mark deductions or zeros. And so that also helped me, you know, in the process. And surrounding myself by uh, with people who were getting first class passes, you know, just ask them questions, get into discussions about relevant topics, pick their brains, listen more than you actually speak, you know. I talk a lot, so I needed to take a sit back, you know, and listen to what other people were saying because clearly they were smarter than me. And you know, once I also gained from them, I could actually go back to my room and then think about it. Um, and also participating in group work. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I personally didn't like group work because sometimes people sit down to discuss relevant things. Next thing you're discussing everything else but the course content. And also make sure that you, you are intentional. Pray about it. Meditate. Reflect on papers or assignments where you didn't do well. 
try and do it again even if you're not submitting it remember when you're in primary school when you're taught do corrections if you misspell a word do it thrice okay you will find time if you want to get a first class pass repeat that assignment rewrite it before an exam create your own exam paper schedule three hours if your exam is supposed to be three hours try and write under the same circumstances in as much as it is not an exam or sit in a quiet library where people are not allowed to make noise or in a computer lab put in headsets even if you're not listening to anything and just do what you need to do preparation is another key formula to excellence because when you get into exam mode or test mode you have some kind of familiarity in your head with just answering questions in a particular space of time so that allows you time to think and what have you another thing that i used to do people who know how to cram if you do subjects that require cramming cram before tests and exams you need it even if it means after the exam you know nothing everything crammed is gone it's fine you need that exam mark and also one other strategy i had to pick up when i was cramming was if i speak a lot or move around people that are speaking about the same thing i, I lose my train of thought so every time before an exam i would stand far away from everyone once the exam starts i would write down on a piece of paper everything that i remember names of key authors the concepts their key arguments and the examples from their work and then i take a breather then I'll look at the exam questions, pick my choice, start writing and make sure that I finish under like the proper or rather the set timeline. And another thing, don't focus on other people. Put blinkers. I am actually capable of seeing black on my sides when I'm sitting in class or in an exam because people will distract you even in lecture theatres. I used to sit very close to the front because there people are unlikely to fidget or pass messages or do funny stuff or be noisy. You know, even if you're at the back seat, just make sure that you don't always sit around people that make noise or people that would distract you if you're friends with them and also don't distract yourself. Put your phone away switch it off when you need to be working that is discipline that is another thing you need to be super disciplined and also you need to take mental breaks i have times when i'm like laptop is shut phone is off i'm just resting if the sleep won't come i'll continue staring into empty space i'm not reading anything because your brain also needs time to rest other tips eat well rest well i cannot overemphasize this the second best thing i do is actually sleeping in as much as people think that i'm a workaholic so put in time to rest have hobbies i love running i love hiking um i don't know what other people do but you know just try do stuff that is also outdoors and change your study environments know where you write best i work best in the library when i'm typing assignments i work best in my room when i'm reading you know printed work and making corrections I work best in the computer lab when I'm chasing a deadline or revising my assignments. Do that. Learn your key skills, learn your key weaknesses and strengths and go for it. If you have not subscribed to this channel please make sure that you do subscribe i am actually begging you to everyone who has subscribed and liked and commented on previous videos thank you so much please continue to do so if you've got more information that you want to add on in terms of becoming a first class student please make use of the comments section you're more than welcome to share from your own stories as well as to give me feedback on how you feel about watching this video trust me these tips work i went from getting 50s 60s 70s to getting 80s in a master's class 90 percent even so this is doable I wish you all the best. Remember, keep working, hard work and discipline pay. Working smart is about knowing your weaknesses and your strengths and working with full knowledge of that and knowing how best to work around that.